an apron, where you can find all kinds of things creative homemaking. Sometimes you're gonna find some cleaning motivation on my channel, other times recipe inspiration, home decor, holiday fun, family ideas, all kinds of things can be found here, and I hope that you will consider joining my YouTube family. As you can tell though by my attire, today is something a little bit special. It is time for another movie night for mom episode. So if you have not heard, the town is abuzz because Bridgerton season two is here, and Lady Whistletown is back to share some salacious stories as only she can do. So obviously I needed to level up, and we are going to be setting up a beautiful, delectable tea party, making some refreshing blueberry lemonade and more. I hope that you will join me as I prepare for the Bridgerton season premiere. Shall we promenade? Now when I think of a tea party, I instantly think of variety. I love the look of those little tiered trays and all of the options you get to pick from. So I'm going to be trying to make several different things for you today, but in smaller portions so that I'm not stuck with a whole bunch of extra food, right? So. As a rule though, when I'm making a multi-course meal, I like to start with the desserts. That way they have plenty of time to sit and you know, kind of firm up anything that they might need so that they're perfect when the time is right. Now, today we are going to be making two different desserts for our tea party. We are going to be making Instant Pot Cheesecake Bites. And this recipe calls for enough to make seven cheesecake bites. So it's just good enough for one of those little silicone egg molds and they turned out delicious. I can't wait to show them to you. We are also gonna be making two different kinds of hand pies. Now, I'm gonna be making a strawberry honey version, and we are also gonna be making gooseberry, the Duke's favorite, of course. Now, I've actually never had a gooseberry, so this is gonna be quite a thrill for me. Now, make sure to stay tuned, because in addition to this, we're also gonna be setting up a beautiful tablescape. I have several savory treats to share with you as well, and you are not gonna to wanna to miss this fun. You will notice I gave Bridgerton names to pretty much everything I am making today, but these are not exclusive to Bridgerton. Obviously, you could use these in any party or occasion, as well as a Jane Austen night. I feel like this is super imposable for both, but what makes these a honey oat cheesecake bite, you might wonder. That is because I am using these honey oat like, granola bars, and I am actually just going to blend them up and use them just like you would for graham cracker crust. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you really push down this crust once you are done making it so that it has a nice firm texture on the bottom. So you'll notice that I use the back of my whisk. You got to improvise sometimes. Now it is time to make our filling. And this is just super simple. You just take all of the ingredients and you want to get them room temperature before you work with them just so that they all meld together a little bit better and throw them in your mixer. The only thing that I will note, I added the egg last and lightly beat it in because that is a tip that I saw online. If you try this, please let me know what you think. And if you don't like it, please let me know what you would change because this is kind of an adapted recipe from multiple recipes I saw online. I really didn't want to take somebody else's recipe. I wanted to make it my own. So I would love to hear your opinion. After this, we are going to let these cook in the Instant Pot for seven minutes with a natural release. Now, if you don't know what just a natural release is, that means I let it sit there until the little silver button pops down. So once that's done, I pull them out of my Instant Pot and I let them cool on the counter for 30 minutes before I put them into the fridge for four hours to set. I should have also mentioned that you put a uh, cup of water into the Instant Pot when you cook it. Um, I feel like that's just such commonplace with Instant Pots. I have a tendency to forget to say that. My apologies. But at the end, we are going to decorate these with chocolate and some fresh fruit dipped in some edible glitter, of course. talk about these hand pies. These are just so incredibly simple. You just take pre-made pie crust and put some jam in the middle and kind of like 
make sure your edges are sealed and cook it just like you would with any normal pie until it gets that nice golden color at 325 to 350 depending on the pan that you're using now I decided to do the strawberry honey jam that we made previously in my Outlander episode and I also got gooseberry jam online from Amazon. I will have it linked. I had never had a gooseberry before and I liked it. I don't really know essentially how I feel about it entirely yet. I'm still kind of getting used to the flavor. It was entirely new to me but if you guys have seen Bridgerton season one you will know that the Duke of Hastings is very fond of gooseberry pie and this is something that Lady Danbury and Violet Bridgerton kind of concoct together when they invite him to dinner so I thought that this would be a perfect addition to tonight's tea party. Let me know what you think down below. Also this is like something that you could make all the time for your kids. This was a absolute special of my child like it was a total favorite of hers when she was growing up because she loves pop tarts but frankly I don't like to give her all the sugar in a standard pop tart that you're gonna find from the store if I'm gonna be frank I have no judgment towards other people I just did not want that extra sugar in her diet so we used to make pies like this and little pop tarts for her all the time so she could still have the joy of a pop tart while I still had that peace of mind Okay, so I'm really excited about these desserts. I actually made those cheesecakes last night so that they had enough time to cool and sit in the refrigerator, and I have just been waiting to eat them. So, but before we can do that, it is time to make our savory dishes. I have several different options that we are gonna be making today. I'm gonna to show you how to make a spinach artichoke puff. Now, what I wanna let you know about the spinach artichoke dip. It is not only great on these little puffs, it is amazing with crackers, with bread, if you want to stuff a chicken breast, if you want to do like a steak spiral stuff with it. This like dip is amazing for all of it. But like as I said today, we're going to be making just little bite sized things for our tea party. In addition to that, we're going to be making some mini omelets, some mini tea sandwiches, of course, as well as these little ham and cheese rolls, just for a little extra something. Now, I hope that you stay tuned though, because after that, we are gonna be making some blueberry lemonade from scratch. This is the first lemonade I've ever made. Fingers crossed, I hope it turns out, ah, so excited. So today I'm calling this dish Lady Danbury's Signature Spinach Artichoke Puffs. I think of it as something that she would have at all of her parties because they are freaking delicious, guys. But I want to give credit where credit is due and say first and foremost, this is based off of my mom's infamous spinach artichoke dip. She is a fantastic chef and it comes if it comes from her kitchen you are absolutely going to love it. It is just definitely a gift that she has and I have just added a couple adaptations. She normally cooks this in the oven or in a crock pot but because I'm using this as a filler today I wanted to cook it in the pan so that it was a little easier for me to dish out. So I because of this I don't want to add my egg until just the perfect time because I want to make sure that that cream cheese is just kind of blended in with the mayonnaise the spinach the artichoke and the green chili and once that has all come together and that cream cheese has started to melt then I mix in my egg and I want to do that before it gets up to a simmer or a boil and just kind of mix that in really quickly and then once you have felt like all of this has really blended and it's gone for a couple minutes, that's when you're going to add in your Parmesan and Colby Jack cheese. Now, I want to tell you, you might be looking at this recipe and saying green chilies in a spinach artichoke dip. My family is not going to eat that. They're not going to like it. But I am telling you, you do not want to omit the green chili. It changes the entire flavor and definitely for the better and it's not an overpowering taste in the dip itself so it's not something that people are going to pick out automatically and i can tell you that because my child was incredibly picky eater when she was younger not not as bad as some kids but if she saw that there was a giant hunk of green chili in something she was out and she has always enjoyed and loved this dip so after that, I'm just going to go ahead and let this simmer and cook until my cheeses and everything is cooked well in the pan and then it is time to pull out my puff pastries and I'm just going to put one teaspoon of this dip onto each little puff pastry square that I'm going to cut. Now one thing that I did not do in this video but I would do in the future is put a nice like I'd melt some butter and use like one of those little pastry brushes and just kind of lightly dust all of these 
because these were amazing, but I feel like that would just take it over the moon. Anyways, let me know if you guys try these. So now we are making what I'm calling queen quiches. And I just wanted to have a couple of these made, so I'm just going to be using one sheet of puff pastry dough today. But this only made me four pies. So if you are making this for multiple people, you are gonna need some extra puff pastry dough. You can also use like standard pie crust dough, but this is the vibe that I wanted to go with. So anyways, I'm going to use a cookie cutter and I used a four inch circle cut to make these little three inch pie pan like fillings. And I took the extra dough and I cut that up because I'm going to use that another day to make some cheese crackers with. But once I fit these into the pan, we are just going to whip up two eggs, one tablespoon of heavy cream and salt and pepper and set that aside. I actually forgot my heavy cream. You're going to notice I add it later. But after that, this is totally up to you. You can add any toppings that you prefer for your quiches in here. I added ham and cheese just to keep it simple. But get creative, have some fun with it. And we are just gonna cook these at 350 degrees until I felt like the puff pastry had expanded and everything looked cooked and golden. And you guys, they were amazing. They were actually so much better than I expected. These would make an amazing breakfast that was made ahead and put into the fridge and just kind of like pulled out as like you wanted something as well. Like, so this is definitely something that I will be doing again. Time to whip up Featherington House ham hors d'oeuvres. Now, this looks incredibly simple because it is incredibly simple, but don't underrate this recipe. It is actually really tasty. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking ham and Laughing Cow's soft Swiss cheese, and I'm just going to take the piece of ham, spread it out, lightly dab it with a paper towel so that the cheese sticks better, and then just put the Swiss over top and just kind of spread it. and then you roll it up and just cut it into little bites. This was something my grandma Nellie used to do for me and my brother and sister when we were little and I loved them. So I wanted to bring them into this tea party experience. Now, if your kids are not into that Laughing Cow Swiss or if you are not into that, um, I know that this is more of an adult themed thing, but sometimes we take recipes over and use them in other things, right? Um, you can also use cream cheese and it's still gonna taste bomb. So anyways, let me know what you think. This is the last dish that we are going to make before we start our lemonade tonight. And I'm calling them Hyacinth's Ham and Cheese Tea Sandwiches. And you guys, this is just like legit as simple as it goes. I'm using a one inch circle cookie cutter and I am cutting bread, cheese, and ham. And I'm just layering it. And I add a little bit of mayonnaise and a little bit of mustard to the parts where my like ham is at because it helps to keep the ham from sliding off of these where the cheese kind of sticks to the bread. But they were just a simple, super cute addition to the tea party tonight. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit you up with how I made my Violet Bridgerton's Blueberry Lemonade. So I tried to make this from scratch. This is my first lemonade. I do feel like it was really amazing. I, because I'm a perfectionist, I feel like I'm gonna tweak it a little bit in the future, um, but it was still just fantastic. And what we ended up using was five lemons that we freshly squeezed. And you're gonna notice that I roll them 
on the counter before I cut and like squeeze them. And that is a trick that my granny taught me when I was a little girl. We actually had a lemon tree in my backyard when I was little. So there was a lot of citrus squeezing in my home. And so once that is done, we are going to set that lemon juice aside. And you'll notice I have this cute little like thing that I'm doing the lemons with too. And it actually keeps out all like most of the pulp and all of the seeds. So it, I find it really convenient. And I got that at my local grocery store. It was just in the produce section. But once that is done, we are going to make our simple syrup and we're going to be making a blueberry simple syrup, but I'm sure you could do this with any kind of berry. Now I am using frozen, but likewise, you could also use fresh and it will be absolutely fantastic. If you haven't made a simple syrup before, you start out by taking one part water to one part sugar and you just put them into a saucepan and just kind of keep whisking them until that sugar is completely melted into the water. Now I did one cup of sugar to one cup of water and once this was completely mixed together I added one cup of frozen blueberries and I just let them simmer for 10 to 15 minutes until the blueberries were completely softened and the color was just rich and I could just I felt like the blueberries had become part of my simple syrup and then I took it over to my jar and just strained out these extra blueberries and after that you are going to add your lemon juice that you have as well as some water and you are going to be using six cups of cold water for this recipe and you just kind of mix it together throw it into the fridge and this thing's ready to go now what's even better though is if you take it and you put like half champagne to it because then it just takes it to the next level and I absolutely loved it so I totally suggest that you can make a cute garnish with the blueberries and some of that lemon skin as well let me know if you like making your own lemonade or if you've ever tried anything like this before Okay, so all of our delicious recipes are ready to go. It is time to set up our tablescape and get this tea party rolling. I hope that you are really enjoying the things that I have made today. Please let me know what you think down below and make sure you stay tuned. So as I am setting up this decor, I just wanted to let you know, I did not buy anything for today's setup. This is all random things that I've had from other occasions like Valentine's Day decor or spring decor or party dishes from other events. And that's actually why I would suggest to you guys, it is awesome to go with the super trendy, like on key, like dishes and like little platters for your events. Uh, but it's actually way more practical to go with just some simple glass dishes because they're timeless and they will work for any event as opposed to buying something that is so theme specific that it really will be useless in the future. So. That is how I basically have all of this stuff. These are some candlesticks I think we got from our wedding and other things. Um, the vase is actually one that I got flowers from my husband when I had our daughter. So like these are all things that I've just kind of kept around and repurposed again and again. And that is like one of the biggest tips I can give you if you like to do decorations of this nature. You might be thinking, you did all of this and set all of this up to watch Bridgerton, really? And my answer to you is yes, absolutely, I did. So often we will do stuff like this and set it up because people are coming over or for somebody else. But my question is, why would you value yourself any less? Why, don't, why not do something special so that you can feel as special as you try to make other people feel? So I think that we all have forms of self-care. These little things like this are self-care for me. So I can't lie, as this is getting set up, I am just itching and itching to go play and watch my show. And so once everything is set up, I'm going to show you a couple of the pictures of my fun afterwards. But then I am going to close out because I want to go play. <laughs>
this is going to be the end of today's video. I hope that this tea party idea inspired you to have a little bit of extra fun with your Bridgerton movie night. Don't forget to spill the tea and let me know what you decided to do and if you guys decided to watch this new season. I'll see you next time.